Now it's time for the fun to begin, creating actions. Before we begin, let's discuss what we're going to do in this page. What I'd like is for this animation to be played upon tap. Same about this animation. For this area, I want that when it's tapped, this animation would play. And when it ends, I want Disco Dog animation to start with a small delay, and then Dork's animation to also start with a larger delay, making puppies from all sides come and listen to Bob and Poppy sing their song. So, let's go ahead and do this. First thing I want to do is create interactive areas where children would be able to touch and make the animations play. So, this is one. It's always better to use interactive areas than to use the animations themselves as triggers for interactions. And this is because sometimes the animation would be hidden behind another object. And also, as you can see, the interactive area is much more precise. Let's call it Bob and Poppy interactive area. and we're ready to go. I can add actions either from the Actions tab here or pressing this top menu item or this button here. This would open the different possibilities for action types. This is System Action, which is not triggered by the user but actually by the system, such as delay after a page is loaded, um, something that happens after a sound is ended or an animation is ended and so forth. This is tap action and shake action. Let's create a tap action. We'll call it dorks and we'll follow the sentence. When tapping dorks interactive area then we want the dorks animation to play. It's as easy as that. Let's do this again. Again, tap. I don't want to add a delay in this case. And now slightly more complex, I'd add another tap action around Bob and Poppy. That when tapping, sorry, Bob and Poppy interactive area, then play animation of Bob and Poppy. And also play sound of Sad Song by Poppy. Maybe we'll give it a short delay. Now we've said that after the animation of Bob and Poppy is finished, we want the other dogs to play their animation as well. So let's do that using a system action. As you see, it's constructed in exactly the same way. When Pop and Poppy has ended, then play animation of Disco Dogs, and I can give this a slight delay and play animation of dorks with a slightly larger delay. I can add an OR condition, meaning that 
this would happen after the Bob and Poppy animation is ended or there would be another trigger. So this is quite flexible and you can create a lot of different user experiences using this tool. And that's how we create actions. After an action has been created you can always go back to it, edit it, tweak it with a delay or without adding OR and AND conditions sequencing a page and arriving at the user experience that you want very easily. The choice of action types that we have here is increasing all the time and very soon you'll see modules making it available to create complex user experiences such as jigsaw puzzles, painting and drawing and so forth very easily and again without the use of code. Coming up, how to test what we've created.